Okay, so I hope you have tried doing the practice question. So this will be the video on the solution. So for the first question, <coughs> let me just read out the question. Huh? So a gas is contained in a vertical frictionless piston cylinder device. So it's contained within here. And the piston has a mass of 3.2 kilograms, cross-sectional area of uh, 35 cm squared. Compressed spring above the piston exert a force of 150 newton on the piston and the atmospheric pressure is 95 kilopascal. So we need to determine the pressure within the cylinder. <coughs> so how do we do this? We can draw the free body diagram of this uh, piston over here. So I drew it over here. And then what this says is that there's a compressed piston, eh, sorry, compressed spring above the piston. So when the spring compresses, so when you compress this spring, you exert a force downwards. So I, oops, so I wrote the force vector to be downwards. At the same time, because you see there's an opening over here, so the atmosphere can enter it over here and then exert the atmospheric pressure, correct? So there's a force by atmosphere. So what's the force by atmosphere? It's basically atmospheric pressure times the area of this piston. And also there's another force and that's the weight of the piston. So the piston has a mass of 3.2 kilograms. So the weight is always going down. Uh. So you know there are three forces that are going down. And what is going up? Because we know that the forces have to balance out. So the pressure within, contained within this cylinder is acting onto this surface. Remember pressure acts on the normal surface. So it acts over here. And then we know that there's a force by the system. Next we do is we convert to SI units. So area is equals to 35 cm square, which is equal to 0 0.0035 meters square. And then the force by the spring is 150 newtons. And the force by the atmosphere, I use pressure times area, and I can find the force. Weight of the piston very easy. So I use the mass times the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81 meter per second square. And I get 31.392 newtons. So using second, newton second law, force equals the mass times acceleration. Since the piston is not moving, so the force equals to zero. And why is that so? Because acceleration is zero. Oops. Okay, so force by piston is basically I just sum up and then I can find out that is 513.892 Newton. And the pressure within the cylinder is just basically the force divided by the area and we get 147 kilopascal. So that's the first question. For problem set 2, we know that there's a pressure cooker. Uh, so pressure cooker usually we cook faster than ordinary pan because it has higher pressure and higher temperature inside. So when you apply this lid, they always have this uh, pad cock over here to release sound of the pressure. Lah, when you don't want the operating pressure within this pressure cooker to be too high. Okay, so basically, we're trying to calculate what is the weight of this pad cock that we need to uh, design it for such that we can maintain a pressure of, let's see, uh, what did it say? Operating pressure is 100 kilopascal gauge. So the little is gauge. Okay, and we know the cross sectional area is 4 mm square. So, as usual, we'll convert everything to SI unit. Okay, so we convert the SI unit. At the same time, we know that it's redundant to consider atmospheric pressure because before you close the lid, you know, atmosphere is really acting onto the fluid inside. What? So when you close it, actually there's some atmospheric pressure inside already. And you know that on top, above, uh, outside of this uh, pressure cooker, there's also atmospheric pressure. So the atmospheric pressure acting on the same area, right, it will cancel out. That's why I say it's redundant to consider atmospheric pressure in our calculation. Okay, so we know that the weight of the pet cock is equal to the force by the system. So I only have one equation, one in unknown, and I can find out what's the mass. So that's very simple. That's question two. For question three, okay, for question three, Balloons are often filled with helium gas because it weighs about like one seven of what the air weighs under identical condition. The buoyancy force can be expressed as FB equals to rho air, G, and V balloon. We'll push the balloon upwards. If the balloon has a diameter of 12 meter and carries two people 85, 85 kilogram each, determine the acceleration of the balloon when it first released. Assuming the density of the air is 1.16 kg per meter square, neglect the weight of the ropes and the cage. Okay, so we recall Archimedes principle. So buoyancy force is basically the weight of the displaced surrounding fluid. We need to understand that air is also a fluid. We cannot ignore air. Okay, so we use Newton's second law, and then we take the convention as going up as positive. So velocity going up is positive. Uh, displacement up is positive. Acceleration up is positive. Okay, 
So using force equals to mass times acceleration, summation force equals to mass times acceleration. Then I know that buoyancy force because it's upwards minus the weight of the humans minus the weight of the helium. Helium also weighs, uh, also has mass, so that's weight also. It's equals to the mass of both helium and human times the acceleration. Because this helium, assuming perfect condition, it doesn't escape at all. It's all within the balloon. So if it moves up together, the mass will not change and the acceleration will be going upwards. Okay, volume of a sphere, so I approximate the volume of the balloon as the volume of a sphere, is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Then I know that the diameter is 12 meter, I know r will be 6 meter. I can find out the volume of the balloon. Then, with that, I know what's the weight of the humans and the weight of the helium. Because if I know the volume, I can very easily calculate the weight of the helium. Okay, so I just do the normal calculation and then using this equation, I can find the acceleration and that's 22.44 meter per second square. So that's all for the problem set.